Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm here to give you a demonstration and explain the Novathor termite proofing resin. Novathor termite proofing resin is a clear liquid resin you spray onto the brick mortar. It soaks in and sets hard. Termites can't get through it. Okay, we've arrived on site at our job. Uh, got our equipment out of the vehicle and the first thing we're going to do is go for a walk around the perimeter, check out that the brickwork and the mortar is prepared to the right standard for the resin to be applied and as we go we'll take our shovel and, and brush and just clean away any dags or, uh, or any mess on the, on the brickwork to make it clean for application. Uh, we'll also, as we go, take the Novathor Flexi Gel and a bit of foam backing rod and as we come to the, the brick expansion joints, we'll fill those to the same height we're going to apply the resin. And then uh, any, any brickwork that may need cleaning, we'll just get a bucket and brush and go through and, and clean off to the uh, suitable standard for the application. Okay, we've got a bit of soil against the brickwork here, which we need to clean away so we can get to the mortar joint. We'll get, get any, uh, they've got here bits of mortar that have dropped. Grab your broom or you can use a brush if you like knurling down to do it and just clean off all the, what you can get there is good. and just go around and get the loose material that's sitting on the bricks themselves because if you leave that there when the resin goes on it will bond it to the brick for some time and it'll make it look quite dirty for a while. Now we've cleaned away the soil that was against the wall here roughly. There's a bit of a uh, bit of mess on the brickwork so we need to give that a bit of a scrub off because the resin will actually bond that in if it's not clean. So it's just, this is just a bit of water with a brush. If it's particularly hard to get off, you can use just a bit of mild detergent and that will generally get rid of it pretty easily. So I like to do this first so it gives it a chance to dry out before you get back to put the resin on. This is a common problem you'll get on, on each side as you come to it with your uh, tap. Uh, a lot of the trades will use it to clean up. So it's critical you get in as soon as you can after the bricks have been cleaned and seal this off because it's going to cause you a lot of work to come in now. As you can see, there's quite a bit of scrubbing to get that clean. The final job we need to do before we can put the resin on is to put a bit of backing rod into the brick expansion joints and install the Novathor Termite Proof Flexi Gel. We just put the backing rod, cut it to the length and press into the joint with a little bit of help. If it's tight, you may need a, something to help you press it in. This is just to hold the flexi gel from going back and filling up right back inside the brick. And then we're ready for a bead of the gel. Just make sure that there's no gaps, the gel's bonded, it's a nice clean surface. That's it, done. With some of the brick expansion joints, you won't have a gap large enough to, to need backing rod. It'll just be sometimes a tight crack, just a small gap. So we'll put a bit of flexi gel in there to seal that as well. We've prepared the job now, it's ready for the resin. Uh, this has been a pretty good standard job, the brickwork was good, but occasionally you'll come across where the bricklayers haven't filled their mortar joints properly, and there may be large gaps which are, are too wide for a little bit of flexi gel. So you need to educate your builder and let him know so that they, they have the job ready for you and it saves your work later on and it's better for you and, and everyone in the long run. All right, we're ready to fill the sprayer. We're gonna need about one litre for every 10 lineal metres. This is an average size home, which is about 60 metres, so I'm going to put in five litres to start and we'll see how we go with that. Another important 
uh, point is when you're emptying your sprayer or filling it up, if you get any drips on the thread, make sure you clean them thoroughly because the resin will act like an adhesive and lock them together. We're just going to pump the sprayer up. It, you don't need a great deal of pressure, just relatively low. I, if I've put five litres in, we'll generally pump it up about 15 to 20 pumps. You may find that you like a little lower or, or higher pressure and you can adjust it a little bit either way to suit your style of spraying, which you'll find out as you go along, you get used to it. This is the Insistex four-way tip that you must use for each job. You'll notice it has four apertures on the back, the two fan apertures and two pin, a high and a low flow of each. All right, we're ready to start spraying. We've got our four-way tip on, which we spoke about before. It has a, uh, two pin nozzles and two fan. There's a low and a high flow in each. And we, we only ever use the low flow, uh, and we're going to start with the low flow pin on this. Okay, we're going to spray onto the mortar joints, try and keep it relatively neat and to the point of runoff. And I'll, you just go along your bed first, and each perp as you go. I find the easiest way. You just want the material to start to run, as you can see there, when it's running down, it's, so, it's to the saturation point, which is what we want. And then we'll go back. In this case, we're doing two courses. You can go a little quicker when you're doing this one, because there's not so much mortar in there as your bed and then your perps on your second course. We've gone around the perimeter and sprayed all the mortar joints. Now we go back to where we started, set our tip to the low flow fan setting, and we're gonna go through and blend over top of the brickwork we've done just for aesthetics. The purpose of the fan spray is to blend in any drips we've put in with our original, so you need to move relatively quick and keep to that line. It's critical in the fan spray that you finish on a horizontal joint of the brickwork so it blends in neatly and it's less visible later on when people come to see it. We've got some cement rendered walls here. You'll notice they have a, a joint struck here at this level. Now what you need to do is discuss with your builder. This joint is ideal if you can have that 75 millimetres above finished ground level and then we can finish our barrier on there. And it gives us a good indicator of where the barrier's gone to. So when you come back to do your inspections later, you've, you've got a, a reference point. In this situation, the joint's been struck directly below the weep hole. In most situations, you'll find that weep hole will be a course higher. The major point to keep in your mind is this joint needs to finish 75 millimetres above the finished ground level. Now we're gonna spray the render. We've got our tip set to the low flow fan setting and we're just gonna go through and use that struck joint as a guide to where we finish. And we want to put this on to the point of runoff, as we did on the mortar joints. It may need a couple of runs through to get it, if it's a wide area, just to make sure you've got full coverage. Okay, now a very important part of the process is our clean up after the job's done. Now we're just going to empty out the rest of our resin back into the, um, back into the drum, our excess material. And then we've got our uh, xylene for clean up, uh, which I've decanted a bit into another drum just to make it easy to pour. Uh, you want to put about 100 mil of xylene into your, uh, into your spray unit, round about, just enough to give it a good clean and a, a swish around. And you just put your sprayer back together. Give it a few pumps to get a little bit of pressure in there. We're going to run it through each of the tips uh, that we use to do the job, make sure they're, they're thoroughly clean. And uh, this, is, this is critical if you want to, want to make your next job easy. If you go away and they're dirty still, you're going to have trouble and have to clean it and that's where you're going to lose your money. And we'll just turn that, that tip around onto the pin 
one we used as well and give that a run through. And, and uh, if, they build, if you do get a little build up over time, you can just soak the tip in some xylene overnight and it, it clears it right up, comes up beautiful. <laughs>